Welcome to another video. This is another quartic equation and it is not palindromic. If you've seen the other video where I talked about palindromic equations, you would have 2, 7, negative 34, and then it will go back to 7 here, and then you have positive 2 here. But that's not what we have. So, it appears you cannot use that same technique for palindromic equations. And this is why I've had this problem for a while. I just didn't know what to do other than just guess values and plug them in. And then you do synthetic division four times or three times. And then you will ultimately arrive at an answer. Actually, you can solve this by guessing a good number. But the purpose of this video is not to use the rational root theorem and then do synthetic division. What I want to do is I want to do the same palindromic technique. Let's get into the video. So the technique for the palindromic equations is I'm going to look at the middle term and take this x squared and use it to divide everything. Now watch what's going to happen. If I divide everything by x squared, because that's the middle term, there are five terms in this, I'm going to end up here with 2x squared. If I divide this by x squared, I'm going to get plus 7x. This is minus 34. If I divide this by x squared, I'm going to get 21 over x. If I divide this by x squared, I'm going to get 18 over x squared. Divide this by x squared, I get 0. And remember, we established that you can confidently divide by x squared because x cannot be 0. That is, the, yeah, so we know that the roots of this kind of equation cannot be 0 because if x equals 0, if you plug in 0, you're going to have 18 waiting. So x is not a solution to what we're looking for. Therefore, you can confidently divide by x squared. Now, with what we have now, what you do is you gather all the terms that contain x squared, either linear or rational. So you note that this and this, they have x squared together. So if I put these two together, I can write 2 in 2. This is x squared plus, there's going to be 9 over x squared. If I gather this and this together, this is going to be plus 7. If I factor out 7, I'm going to get x minus 3 over x. And then I have minus 34. Did you see that? That's interesting. Equals 0. So, it looks like this is the square of this. But we cannot say that this is the square of this. But, if we replace this with, a, do a T substitution like I normally would like to do, or U substitution if you like, we can see something come out of this that looks like this, and then we can rewrite this expression. So what we're going to do is say, let t be equal to x minus 3 over x. Remember, this is what we did too in the case of the palindromic equations. If we do this, then this implies that t squared equals x minus 3 over x squared. And guess what? When you square this, let's do it quickly here x minus 3 over x times x minus 3 over x. This times this is x squared. This times this will be minus 3. This times this will be minus 3. And this times this will be plus 9 over x squared. So you see that this actually, when it's squared, even though the signs are different, generates the very first one. So here, that's um, the same thing as x squared 
plus 9 over x squared minus 6. Remember, what we just got here is t squared. So if we want just this part, we're going to add 6 to both sides. So t squared plus 6 is this guy. So we can go here and say 2 times t squared plus 6 plus 7. Remember, we replace this with t. This is just t. And this is minus 34 is equal to 0. So all the x's have disappeared. We now have a simple quadratic that we can solve. And if you distribute this, what do we get? We get 2t squared plus 12 plus 7t minus 34 equals 0. So we have 2t squared plus 7t minus 22. So we have 2t squared plus 7t minus 22 is equal to 0. And this can be factored. Multiply 2 by negative 22, you get negative 44. And you say, what two numbers will I multiply to get minus 44? But when I add them together, I'm going to get plus 7. That's easy. 44 is just 11 times 4. And 11 minus 4 is 7. So it's easy for you to know that this is going to be 2t squared plus 11t minus 4t minus 22 equals 0. So I just replace 7t with this and what's left is just 2t plus 11. Here what's common is um, just negative 2. And we'll have 2t plus 11 equals 0. So we have t minus 2 equals 0, or 2t plus 11 equals 0. So here we have t equals 2, or t equals negative 11 over 2. Okay, so those, these are the two possible values of t. Okay, I and mean, you don't have any doubts when it comes to this. So you want to go back to the substitution that we did. We know that t is x minus 3 over x. And then you begin, we now need to get x. So this is not the end, we need to get x. So um, let's draw a line here. So we say that x minus 3 over x is equal to t, let's call it 2. So now you're going to generate a quadratic equation here. You multiply everywhere by x, that tells you that x squared minus 3 equals 2x, so that x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now this is a very easy quadratic. What two numbers will you multiply to get minus 3 and their sum is minus 2? It has to be minus 3 times 1. Yes. So it's minus 3 and 1, so x minus 3, x plus 1 equals 0, means that x equals 3 or negative 1. So these are the two possible values of x. So the next thing is to use the second part of it. So we also know that um, x minus 3 over x will be equal to 11 over 2. Ne sorry, negative 11 over 2. So we multiply everywhere by 2x to get rid of the two denominators. So this is going to be 2x squared minus, if you multiply this by 2, it's going to be 6 equals, multiply this by 2x, 11x. So you have 2x squared minus plus 11x minus 6 equals 0. Now, you multiply 2 by this, you get minus 12. What two numbers will you multiply to get minus 12, but their sum is 11? Well, it has to be 12 and minus 1. So it's the same thing, negative 6. This would have been a hard number to guess. Even this 1 half would have been really tough for you to deal with. So I think um, it was good that we went this way and not the rational roots theorem way. So therefore, x equals, the options are negative 6, negative 1, 1 half, 
and 3. Now the good thing about this is this always works whether your roots are real, rational or not. Okay, if you're lucky though after you do the palindromic strategy you end up with something that can generate this for you. Just use it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.